A good home is about so much more than just simple shelter. It should be a place that truly encourages good health. Health of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit, and your body. And that is exactly what this next tiny house does in a very unique way. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Bryce. How are you? Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. This house is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And these gardens are stunning. <laughs> First of all, can I just ask a little bit about where we are right now and how you actually came to be here on this property? Yeah, um, we are at the Circle Yoga Shala and it's a training facility for yoga teachers. So we do 200 hour, 500 hour, all the way up through yoga therapy trainings here. And it's also a community. So I was involved with them through yoga circles <laughs> and it's just worked out that I was also building this tiny house and it was like I had found my people. And so I spent the last two years building this and then moved it here in May and kind of finished it up and got everything in place. And here I am. And in that respect, a tiny house is the perfect way to join an existing community, isn't it? Because you have your own space, it's all yours and as you like it, and it's yeah. a place you can retreat to. But when you want to be in the community, it's right out here. Yeah, I actually found that through uh, personal experience. I had lived in another yoga community in which I was you know, in the main building and in sort of, uh, you know, you have your own room, but it's very different. All the noises are right there. So I knew that community was important to me and it was something that I wanted but I knew I needed to have my own space and kind of my own domain to make that work uh, so you can have a space to retreat to like you said. And who's this? This is Dally. Hi Dally. A porch hound. Beautiful dog. Yeah I'm not sure what sort of mix she is but she is my favorite accessory. She's so beautiful. So you named your tiny house Turtle Medicine. Tell me a little bit about that. Well there's lots that goes behind that. I didn't name it that at first but as it started taking shape I started learning more about Native American traditions uh, and turtle medicine and what that means and then um, in the Native traditions everything at a certain time is medicine. So say you were seeing lots of turtles around in your life then you could inquire into turtle medicine and what nature is showing you. And turtle medicine is about slowing down, it's about adapting to your environment. So I was building this in Springfield, Missouri and reclaiming everything. So I just kind of started inquiring as to what was around, what houses were going down and kind of just had to wait until the right thing arrived. So it was sort of a way of reminding myself again and again that this was about a process and that a process can't be hurried. You can just relax into it again and again. So through all the obstacles, just reminding myself to adapt and adjust and slow down and be good with where things are. What was it that inspired you to use so many reclaimed or recycled materials in this home? The area that I live, there was a ton of materials to be reclaimed, a lot of houses going down and all of that stuff was just going to the landfill. And so it was sort of my way of not only reclaiming the materials, but also reclaiming a certain part of my life by kind of returning to my roots and being a part of kind of the nitty gritty <laughs> of the Ozarks, you know, the trailer and looking for it. We kind of went all in through Southeast Missouri and the cedar siding came from a barn. So I took down two barns and gathered uh, materials from probably about six or seven different houses that were all going down. So I extracted the windows, you know, pulled the doors out of their spots. So that was a lot of work, but it was well worth it because I found things I really love. One of the things that immediately interests me about the design and concept of this house is that you've designed this to help encourage movement. Tell me how that all came about. I've always been um, into movement as an athlete or a trainer and then now as a yoga teacher, but more specifically as I started to come do trainings here at the Circle Yoga Shala, I started to learn about all the ways that humans aren't really moving anymore. So for example, these stall bars I built to not only be for use in, you know, like mobility and range of motion exercises for the arms and shoulders, but it's also a ladder up to the roof, which is where my yoga mat kind of stays and where I do most of my yoga practices for now while the weather is really nice. Yeah, I call it the top of the world. And just in general here, you've got such a lovely outdoor living space as well, don't you? I do, yeah, and it really made it homey so much faster, you know, to be able to have this space and I've always wanted a wraparound porch. 
Well, I cannot wait to check out what you've done on the inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, let's check it out. All right. Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I love the style of this place. Thanks, yeah, I love it too. I always tell people there's not anything in here that I don't love. That's a good feeling. You can really see that everything in here has had a life before and comes into this space telling a story, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Pretty much everything has a story. For example, this was an old flower box, so I made this and the open shelving with the parts from the flower box, so these holes were to drain the water from the flowers. And now they're candle holders. Did you have sort of a vision for what you wanted to create in mind, or was this all just completely dictated by what you found? Yeah. Uh, the first thing that really determined a lot is this leaded glass window, which I call the miracle window, because it's a miracle that none of, it didn't break along the way, because we extracted it from this house, which was a brick house, so it was really hard to get out, and then managed to get it in here. So it was kind of the centerpiece of a lot of the design, and the wood beams. So that came from a barn that we took down and I just love them. And so I knew I wanted those to be exposed in this portion of it. And from there, I, I had originally thought I would do stairs, but then I found that ladder. And so it all sort of just adapted from there when necessary. The design in here is really nice. Walking into this part of the home, everything just feels really nice, open, light, spacious. Tell me about how you've set everything out in here. Yeah, so, you know, this main living space, I really wanted it to have sort of that great room feel that it was high ceilings and connected to the kitchen and sort of just a, a unified living space. So I kind of designed it to where I would come in, there's two doors, would come in that other door and be able to have that as the utility space and then that this could be just, you know, for living and keeping beautiful and organized. <laughs> well, it's actually quite spartan, isn't it? You haven't cluttered it up with a lot of furniture and everything. Yeah, so part of uh, that movement aspect that we were talking about is that sitting on the floor or you know sitting in different positions is really good for the body. So not having chairs that kind of put you into a sinking or a passive position, but using your hip rotation and your core to sit upright, but also still being able to have kind of lounge spaces that are comfortable and cozy. Is that still relaxing though? Well, doesn't that look pretty relaxing? I have I'm to admit, pretty, that, looks, I feel that, pretty looks, chill. that looks pretty relaxing. You know, give me a book, some popcorn. And so all these benches are modular, so I can move these over there, or I can put them into the center. And I use this wall uh, for my projector, so I'll kind of just move this over there and, and sit and watch music videos mostly. I really like music videos on the wall. So I find it really comfortable, and I can use the benches also for laying on or relaxing. That's kind of why I decided to go with these benches that are a little bit less cushy or cozy than most houses would be, but I find them really useful. And then down here we have your kitchen space. Yes. Beautiful Live Edge countertop. Yes, yeah, so this is silver maple and all of the Live Edge, actually the walnut and the maple that are on the benches and this maple all came from wood that was at the same properties as the barns that were coming down and the houses that I reclaimed this window and several of the windows from. And so all the trees were going down, you know, probably 20 old growth trees. And so I got on Craigslist and I called a sawmill guy and I said, will you split, you know, the wood with me? for processing it. So they all, you know, have a lot of sentimental value to me in that way because it was kind of all part of this process of just starting to try to find, you know, what was available. And I knew I would have some wood slab, but this one I, I chose because I really like the kind of bump out feature here for a little bit of extra counter space. No sink in here just yet though. No, so where I'm at now is not connected to water, so there's no need for the sink. I sort of use the kitchen right now, mostly for supplements or making an omelet, something pretty basic. And then I just either use my water jug to wash dishes or go to the main house to wash everything up. Again, just looking at this kitchen, there's so much beauty and character that's just been poured into this space. Oh, thank you. All of these mugs and everything, it all just looks like it's so at home in here. Yeah, I made all those mugs. You made these? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so every time, you know, you have a cup of tea in a, in a cup that you made, it has a certain feeling as well. And then I love how you've done this open storage in the kitchen too. Yeah, so I'm really into herbs and spices, and so I knew I wanted to have a lot of 
open shelving and I also think it's really beautiful to see all the different uh, roots and plants and yeah designed it to be really open so you can see all that and have it easily accessible when you're making your potions. <laughs> Gorgeous and this all gets used it's not just decoration. Oh yeah it all gets used. I'm a chai fanatic. Nice. So I make several varieties of chai. I get to hang out while I make my chai. So it's that's really what I was going for first thing. It's kind of one of the things I do. So to wake up and get some movement in and be able to do that right here because I also have a tendency to walk away from the chai and it boils over and now I don't have to worry about that. Well, there you go. Now <laughs> that is super cool. Tell me about how you've done that. Yeah, so this bar goes straight through underneath the loft and really its only purpose is to be able to hang because this is um, something that has sort of moved out of the movement profile, I guess you could say, of human beings and is really important for head and neck alignment. So usually a lot of people that I see as a, a yoga therapist, this is what we're focused on. So I wanted to incorporate that, making it as seamless and as integrated into my life as possible. And so what do we have through here? Um, so this is sort of the start of the utility area. So my closet is here and then there's a fridge back behind here. And I sort of made the curtain so that it could go pretty much any direction so that then this area still feels uh, nice and clean and uncluttered. And then through here is your bathroom, I'm guessing? Yeah, so it's sort of a bathroom and a dressing room, I call it. So um, the toilet is composting. Uh, there's a big compost operation here, so all the toilets are composting. That just makes it so much easier, doesn't it, when you're actually on a property where they've got existing infrastructure for doing all of yes, that. Yes, it's a whole learning curve, so to just be able to get in on the process was hugely influential in actually putting the loo in here and having this for winter I think will be really lovely to not have to walk to the outhouse every time yeah definitely I have to go <laughs> yeah so not having a shower in here is mm -hmm. that a problem no there's a, a whole shower room here I think if I was off the grid or off by myself of course I, I would want a shower and it's plumbed to be able to have a shower and it has an RV hookup for water so um, if that becomes the case or the next place I move that makes more sense then I can just switch everything up and the shower will come out right here and it's actually designed to be able to have an outdoor and an indoor shower but it will kind of grow with uh, my off-grid lifestyle. Well should we check out the sleeping loft and see what you've done up there? Yeah let's go. All right. Now I'm pretty interested in seeing how this ladder is going to work because it doesn't look like the easiest thing to get up and down. It isn't. And I tell people that if they can't get up into my loft, they can't come up into my loft. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually use one of these top bars to kind of help and then just get a cheek on there and you're in. <laughs> and it's actually nice to have the handles up top. It is, isn't it? The way that this ladder is actually folding over, it's pretty unusual, but it actually makes accessing the loft a lot yeah. simpler, doesn't it? Beautiful space up here too. Thanks. Yeah, this is all that same wood that I was saying is from the outside, the cedar. So hopefully it'll keep the moths away. The floor is uh, just a parquet floor, but I put a geometrical shape underneath it, so that was fun to get to do all those little things. And I thought it would feel crowded, but to sleep here really is super cozy and with the window right by my head, I really love it. And above us now, we've got the deck area still, right? Yeah. Can we check that out? Yeah, let's do it. More climbing. Let's do it. <laughs> so I want to show you one of my favorite ways to get down. All right. Which yeah. also involves hanging. So you can kind of just lower yourself down and get your first morning stretch. Nice. And drop, but be sure to bend your knees as you hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that is seriously cool. And <laughs> I don't know, I just love how playful it's made this space. You know, everything just becomes so functional and I just love the way that the whole home encourages you to move. Yeah, yeah, there's one more element I could show you that I got from my sawmill friend. I saw this burly thing and I was like, what is that? It reminded me of a climbing hold, but it's, you know, made of beautiful wood. So if you're climbing, you can also kind of get a little swing out. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> and then this here is how you access the roof. Yeah, so these are stall bars and then just also a ladder. Nice. You coming up? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, now that is cool. 
I love how your yoga mat's just already up here. <laughs> yep, this is where I use it, and it's rubber, so it's waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that those pipes are for a rooftop bathtub. You can dream it, you can do it, and there'll be water up here, yeah. Uh -huh. So there's water and electricity, and this part is set up for solar panels, should that ever be necessary, or uh, there's also a spot for batteries down in the front. So I kind of imagine moving towards more and more off-grid. And the view up here, <laughs> this is pretty hard to beat, isn't it? It is, up in the trees. So how long have you actually been living in the home now? I guess it would be three and a half months. So three months, that's still pretty fresh. How are you finding it? Yeah, I, I really love it. I'm back and forth between here in Springfield, uh, where I still teach yoga and kind of run my business from there. So every time I come home to it, I spend about 70% of the time here, I'm still really thrilled and it feels like coming home to a, a really restful place, which is really nice. How much did this home actually cost you to build? Well, if you don't count what was bartered, but you do count all the tools I had to buy, I spent 12000 total. That's pretty <laughs> remarkable. What yeah. was the secret to keeping the cost down that low? Uh, location. <laughs> the other would be just building everything myself, doing, you know, that, that doesn't count all of the ridiculous amount of time I spent <laughs> working on this. Yeah, so from the materials coming from a barn that I just, I had access to because otherwise it was going to be thrown away. So the things that I built it with were, you know, zero dollars in most cases. Most of the expense would be the electrical, the plumbing, the screws. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of screws. The whole process was allowing myself to do what I really wanted to do at my deepest core. And, and that was to build things and to engage with process and engage with community in a way that I'm offering my whole self to what's happening and to what I'm doing. So I learned one that I can finish something. <laughs> and that act of following a process from start to finish, I learned about process itself. So it also helped me to see where I am in my own process and observing all of the things that I would do, you know, when things weren't going well, when things were going well, and even now that it's finished, sort of the feelings of safety and comfort that I have now because of taking these steps to sort of get grounded and, and stabilized in my own life. So it taught me that my practice is working and that's hopeful. <laughs> and I think that that is something that we could all use a dose of right now. Jamie, your home is truly beautiful. I love all of the materials that you've put into this. I love its story and I love how adventurous you have made this place. Congratulations on creating something truly Thank special. Thank you. There's little question about it that as modern humans we have definitely become way too sedentary. And what I love about this home is just the way that it always encourages movement and movement in ways that we wouldn't normally use our bodies in day-to-day -day life. This place really is something very unique.